Was Che Guevara the man we believe him to be, or does he occupy a position of myth in modern society? Welcome back to the Top Trendy Info channel, if it's your first time here please hit the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell for fast hand info as they happen. The legacy of Che Guevara is a subject that, when examined, frequently brings disputes. From a position any place to the right of left-wing legislative issues, Che Guevara is a figure who is not difficult to excuse as a not exactly exquisite person. In left-wing circles, nonetheless, contentions rage over numerous parts of Che Guevara's life. To comprehend the reason why this is, his life should be analyzed, and his activities should be gauged. Ernesto Che Guevara was born in Argentina on June 14, 1928. The eldest of five children, his family was relatively well-off and had strong left-wing sympathies. His father, an ardent supporter of the Republicans during the Spanish Civil War, often hosted Republican veterans from the war in his home. He was also a proficient athlete who loved sports. In particular, was his love for rugby. He played fly half for Club Universitario de Buenos Aires and was known for his extremely aggressive style of play. So since the beginning, one can see that he was impacted by liberal beliefs and had a propensity for hostility. In any case, it wasn't simply his environmental factors and his physicality that characterized his initial life. Che was a savvy person who participated in numerous scholarly pursuits. At 12 years old, he began partaking in chess competitions. At home, he invested a lot of his energy participated in books, perusing a large number of subjects, including governmental issues, religion, belief system, reasoning, verse, humanism, history, paleohistory, science, and designing. His inclinations appeared to have no restrictions. Che Guevara proceeded to concentrate on medical studies and travel widely through South America. During his movements, he came into contact with outrageous destitution and the shocking circumstances in which many individuals lived. One occurrence that immensely impacted his standards was seeing a youngster incapable to get clinical consideration due to a lack of cash. Circumstances like these caused Guevara to understand that he needed to go through his time on earth helping these individuals. He chose to leave medicine and enter the domain of legislative issues, where he could address the underpinning of the issues through armed struggle. The Marxist struggle against capitalism and the imperial capitalism of the United States became hallmarks of his character. This opposition to capitalism is an essential factor in assessing the phenomenon of Che Guevara as an icon for the left insomuch as the modern world is concerned. Many people, especially younger generations in the West, have become disillusioned with capitalism, which they see as being in decline and ushering in an era of hopeless oligarchy. As such, people such as Che Guevara are given more thought, and their crimes are forgiven in the minds of those who are angry and struggling to make rent in the richest countries in the world. Che Guevara voyaged through motorbike with his companion, Alberto Granada, and archived his movements. His notes were transformed into a book and, consequently, a film, The Cruiser Journals, 2004. Albeit just zeroing in on his initial life before he turned into a progressive, the film adds to the gallant persona of Guevara. It helped add to the disinfected form of the Che Guevara that exists as an image of the left. In 1953, Che Guevara went to Guatemala to help the fairly chosen administration of Jacobo Arbenz. The public authority was sanctioning a progression of changes that tried to rearrange land possession. Prodded by this turn of events, the US sloped up its endeavor to eliminate Arbenz from power. It soaked the country with hostile to Arbenz handouts, equipped enemy of Arbenz guerrillas, and started bombarding runs in plain airplane. The public authority was ousted, and thought socialists were executed. This occasion solidified Guevara's contempt for US government. It was likewise during this time that Guevara was acquainted with Cuban progressives far away, banished in shame, who might shape the way of his profession. From Guatemala, he proceeded to work in Mexico, acquiring further guerrilla preparing. 
The following stage in his profession was the Cuban upset. The Cuban upheaval was an incredibly difficult stretch for Che Guevara. The underlying period of the conflict saw a lot enduring, and 60 of the underlying 82 progressives were killed. After this, the guerrilla development spread in the rustic areas of Cuba. Guevara became Fidel Castro's second in order and, albeit severe, was all around cherished by individuals with whom he had normal cooperations. This is somewhat because of the way that Guevara worked with the structure of schools, studios, stoves, and numerous different offices to work on the existences of the rustic people, and to build the size of the guerrilla development. In the battling that followed, Che ended up being a mind-blowing strategist and won fights against crazy chances. He was additionally noted as being incredibly daring and, surprisingly, rash, making appreciation from the two his companions and his adversaries. In 1959, Guevara voyaged widely, visiting the nations of the band and gathering. He got back to Cuba, yet by 1960, Che Guevara and Fidel Castro questioned philosophical contrasts, and referring to that his responsibility to the Cuban transformation was finished, he passed on the island to proceed with progressive work all through the remainder of Latin America. For the following seven years, he battled for shift in power a few nations in Latin America and Africa. In any case, the battles were ruthless, and support was hard to get, as numerous laborers would have rather not carried on with the way of life of a socialist guerrilla nor live in a space molded by guerrilla uprisings. In 1967, Che Guevara, at 39 years old, was pursued down and caught in Bolivia. His detainers executed him as opposed to allowing him to go to preliminary, knowing that since Bolivia had no capital punishment, the most exceedingly awful he would get was life detainment. An extensive preliminary would acquire a lot of undesirable consideration from socialist nations. Thusly, he kicked the bucket a legend's passing, the ideal symbol of a saint prepared for world distinction and respect. Imagery of Che Guevara is everywhere and has transcended the roles in which he was made famous. His image is a marketing tool and, in many cases, an accessible, easily recognizable symbol of chicness that pervades the fashion scene, adorns walls, and appears in various forms of media. This imagery is seen as benevolent at best and benign at worst. The commercialization of Che is subject to debate and controversy. While many have noted that commercialization is a natural capitalist process, it has also served to pacify the revolutionary character. Some academics have argued, however, that this could have a reverse effect in that the cost of living is getting higher, and younger generations are feeling increasingly disassociated with the success of capitalism. Without the commercialization of Che Guevara, many would not know who he was or for what he stood. Now, however, an angry generation of youths today has an icon that they can transform into a martyr hero who fought for things that the younger generations want and need. Che Guevara without a doubt had an unforgiving and ruthless side. He managed Fidel Castro's terminating crews. Compelled, 176 foes of the upheaval were executed, a large number of which were individuals from Batista's mystery police. What is advantageously precluded in this contention is that at La Cabana jail camp, over which Guevara managed, the primary casualties were individuals from the previous Batista government and were at legitimate fault for severe constraint and murder themselves. It very well may be contended that the preliminaries at La Cabana were Cuba's Nuremberg preliminaries. In any case, it should be noticed that the preliminaries were neither extensive nor comprehensive during the time spent arriving at reality. Che Guevara also created the idea of the new man, an idealized image of the perfect revolutionary who was cooperative, selfless, and anti-capitalist. Anyone who strayed from this ideal was subject to persecution. It is also claimed that Guevara was a homophobe and is reported to have, along with Castro, viewed homosexuality as a bourgeois decadence. It is also contended that Che was instrumental in creating labor camps, which would evolve into concentration camps, where people who didn't fit with the imagery of the Cuban Revolution would be sent. 
According to journalist Paul Berman, this included gay people, dissidents, and people with AIDS. In spite of the activities of Che Guevara, what is clear is that a significant part of the counter-Che feeling is a result of those with hostile to socialist perspectives, and he is gone after on the grounds that he was a socialist as opposed to his ability as a conflict criminal. Che Guevara, in the same way as other socialist progressives and pioneers, is a typical substitute on which to stick barbarities, even as a substitute. In this, Che is viewed as liable by affiliation. Indeed, even in noticeable distributions, Che Guevara assumes the fault for socialist rebellions and nationwide conflicts that have held the South American landmass. In remarking on the faction of Che, numerous antiquarians, scholars, and writers have denounced the fame of Che Guevara in current times. His ubiquity has been accused on his ability to incite sympathy among the ruined young people of the wealthy West, contends moderate American creator imprint Falkoff, while Irish writer Sean O. Hagen commented, in the event that Che hadn't been conceived so gorgeous, he wouldn't be a legendary progressive. The image of what Che Guevara represents is varied. His life story is distorted by proponents of both sides of the political spectrum, and the veracity of claims on both sides is subject to massive debate. In the face of individualism, Che remains contentious. Everybody has their own set of principles with different ideas of what is justified and what should be condemned. As such, there can never be an international consensus on what exactly Che Guevara represents. And perhaps there shouldn't be. Kindly keep following for more updates. Tell us what you think about this on the comments section and don't forget to subscribe to this channel.